Hello and welcome to Math 301 Combinatorics. In this video, I want to introduce binomial coefficients. You may have seen a little bit about them in Maria's video on factorials, but I'm just going to start from the beginning. So the binomial coefficient n choose k is defined as the number of ways to choose k things out of a collection of size n, and we're not paying attention to order. So it's um, denoted n choose k with this symbol. And out loud, you just say, and choose K. So let's begin with my favorite example. What's the number of ways to choose two fingers out of five? Well, that's five choose two, because we're choosing a set of two fingers out of my hand of five fingers. And, and let's try to count it. So how many ways could I choose two fingers out of five? Well, if I, I use my thumb, I could have my thumb and index, thumb and middle, thumb and ring, thumb and pinky. And then if I don't use my thumb, I could use index and middle, index and ring, index and pinky. But then if I don't use my index, I could use uh, middle and ring, middle and pinky. Or if I don't use my um, middle either, there's only one final choice, my ring and pinky. So in total I have, let's try to count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I have ten ways to choose two fingers out of five. And this broke down as four plus three plus two plus one, which was ten. All right. That's a little clunky, but it's it's worth practicing to see if you can choose, if you can count five choose two or six choose two um, small numbers just on your, on your fingers. There's, there's a much nicer formula for this. So in general, the formula for n choose k is n choose k is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial. So, so let's, let's try this formula on five choose two and, and confirm that we get the same answer. So five choose two, if we trust this formula, it should be five factorial divided by two factorial times five minus two factorial. So that's three factorial because five minus two is three. And then we wanna cancel things when we try to um, compute this. You don't wanna multiply five factorial out and get you know, a large number. You instead want to find things that cancel. So five factorial is five times four times three times two times one. Two factorial is two times one. And three factorial is three times two times one. All right. So I can cancel the three, the two, the one. And then I just have um, five times four divided by two or 20 divided by two, and I get the same answer that I did when counting on my fingers. I get, get exactly 10. Let me briefly try to explain this formula. It may look a little strange at first. It's not even clear that this is always an integer, right? We're dividing by k factorial. We're dividing by n minus k factorial. It's not even clear that you always get an integer, but you do. So the way you can think of doing this is, let's say here are my n objects. And I've drawn them as if they look the same, but pretend every, every object was different. These are balls maybe, and the balls have different colors. So maybe um, this one is, is uh, has plaid, whereas this ball is polka dotted, you know, and this ball has stripes. Okay, so I have n different objects. From these n objects, I want to choose k of them. Okay, so maybe maybe k in this example is equal to four. So then n minus k in this example is going to be the remainder. Okay. One way I could think of choosing n objects is I just line up the balls in order. 
and there's n factorial different ways of lining up the n balls in order, okay? And then I'm always gonna choose the first k balls in that order. But there's various ways I could get the same choice of k balls, right? If I reorder these first k balls, then I don't change the balls chosen. And notice there's k factorial ways to reorder these first k balls. So that's why I'm dividing by k factorial. And similarly, if I reorder the last n minus k balls, well, that doesn't change the k balls at the beginning of the line that were chosen. And there's n minus k factorial ways to reorder these last balls. So I divide by that too, since, since those reordings don't affect the balls chosen. So in summary, one way you can think of this formula, n choose k is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial, is this procedure for choosing k objects out of n. Line up your n objects. There's n factorial ways to do that. And the k objects we're going to choose are the first k. But I want to divide out by the redundancies coming from the k factorial permutations of the first k objects, which don't change the objects chosen. And similarly with the last n minus k objects. Alrighty. So I want to end this introduction by telling you two of my favorite properties about the um, binomial coefficients. And I'll, I'll introduce these via examples. The first example is that five choose two is equal to five choose three. If you compute either one, you'll have five factorial divided by two factorial and three factorial just in different orders. But you should really think about this combinatorially. If I want to choose two fingers out of five, maybe these two fingers to hold up, that's the same as actually choosing a complementary collection of three fingers out of five to fold down. Okay, So choosing two fingers to leave up is the same as choosing three fingers out of five to fold down. And th this is a more general property. More generally, n choose k is equal to n choose n minus k. You could plug the two sides into this formula and, and prove that they're equal algebraically, or you could think of this combinatorial explanation, which I did. The last property I wanna mention is given by this example. So let's say I wanna choose two fingers out of five, okay? I'm gonna break down my choice in the following way. First, I'm gonna think of, I'm gonna include my thumb for sure and, and figure out how many ways I can choose um, two fingers if I include my thumb for sure. And then I'm gonna think about the number of ways if I exclude my thumb for sure. And how many ways can I choose two fingers out of five like that, okay? So this first term is coming from when I include my thumb. So if I wanna choose two fingers out of five, including my thumb, well, my thumb's included. So out of the remaining four, I only need to choose one more finger. And there's four choose one ways to do that. Or if my thumb is excluded, then from the four remaining fingers to get up to two fingers, I need to choose two. All right. So you can work out the math here. You know, five times five choose two, we already saw was equal to 10. There's 10 ways to choose two fingers out of five. And 10 is indeed equal to four plus six. Four choose one is equal to four. One, two, three, or four ways to choose one finger out of four. And four choose two is equal to six. Let's count that together. I have one, two, three, four, five, six ways to choose two fingers out of four. So this is also a more general property. Okay. If I want to choose k plus one things from a collection of size n plus one, well, I could split that as a sum of these two terms. And think of this as to choose two fingers out of five. Well, I could either include my thumb and then from the remaining um, fingers, I only need to choose one fewer, or I could exclude my thumb and then from the remaining fingers, I need to choose here, k plus one. 
This property is what leads to the binomial coefficients appearing in Pascal's triangle, which we'll learn more about later. All right, so I'll end this video there. Um, thanks for your time and attention, and I uh, hope you grow to love binomial coefficients. We'll see a lot more of them.